Hello everyone and welcome to Nano. And today I am joined by Mike and John. We're gonna be discussing an ACS chemical biology paper that came out uh, this year. And um, it's on the development of novel B-cell lymphoma or BCL6 protax and inhibitors that provide insight into um, small molecule targeting of BCL6. And this work was done by AstraZeneca I'm super excited to talk about BCL6 and, you know, how they've really gone about targeting this, you know, really vital uh, protein within uh, B-cell lymphoma. And so I, I kind of prepped a little bit of background for us to take a look at just so we can kind of get an idea of why uh, this is such a good target and why, honestly, degradation is a really interesting way that I think could be really powerful. So to start off, uh, we have BCL6 here. And really, uh, BCL6, uh, a big thing to understand about it is, is a transcription factor, as well as understanding how it works within multiple systems that really push cancer forward. So one of the first things to note is a GC, or B-cell differentiation. And really, we're going to want to be able to understand how B-cells, due to their nature of starting off kind of nonspecific but then needing to be able to rapidly proliferate as they differentiate and produce an antibody that's highly specific has this sort of built-in rapid uh, proliferation uh, response and system that BCL6 sits in the middle of with IRF4, NF-kappa-B, and a number of other situations. And so really being able to see this side of it with understanding the differentiation and the exit program and what this is really going to do is it's going to take it and after this entire differentiation occurs, it allows the mature B cell to stop proliferating uh, rapidly and really is meant to act as a tumor suppressor. And what we can see here is that BCL6 is actually, it inhibits that. BCL6 could uh, have a, a great effect on really helping propagate and keeping that going. As well as with DNA damage repair, uh, proliferation, and cell checkpoints, we can see that it does a lot to kind of reduce the ability of the cell to go through apoptosis, which we can see through P53 here, as well as understanding EP300 and a number of other uh, markers that really can kind of help uh, prevent this out of control growth. And so that's, that's kind of what I like here. And just for all of you out there who really like to see uh, more typical transcription factor pathways, you can see here with, you know, B cell receptor and how this sort of helps starts getting this going to really uh, begin the rapid proliferation. We can see all this with, you know, MAPK pathway, PI3K, AKT, and how all of this links through and really helps with the cell proliferation and differentiation, as well as seeing kind of up here in a different perspective with um, interleukin receptors, as well as toll-like receptors, and even with some uh, tyrosine receptor kinases. Um, how BCL6 goes through MYC as well as, once again, PI3K, AKT, and MAPK to really drive proliferation and slow down um, a number of tumor suppressor responses that are vital to keeping our B cells from being, you know, the heroes of the immune system and not the villains uh, of our, you know, entire bodies. But let's uh, take a look at the protein and take a look at the awesome molecules AstraZeneca prepared uh, and uh, I'll let you take it away, Carla. Right, John. And so, um, yeah, along those lines, I guess what they were trying to do is design some compounds um, that would inhibit that uh, degradation process of proapoptotic proteins. So, um, yeah, they started with the structure of BCL6 um, from a fragment screening library. Um, and initially, they had this triazine hit, um, which was around 10 micromolar. And then uh, they did another screen for related hits, and they came up with a, a chloropyrimidine scaffold um, and investigated some key mm. contacts here. So maybe we can check out this structure and see. Um, you know, some of the observations that they made. So Carla, this chloro you mentioned here seems to fit in really nicely into a little mm. sub pocket here. Yep. 
And I believe they also noticed that in the upper portion of the pocket, there's quite a bit of space to mm. try to design um, oh, yeah. some, some additional uh, functionality there. And you can see that um, there are quite a few interactions with water molecules also in the pocket as well, mm. including a carboxylate that's more or less solvent exposed. So in their next iteration, um, actually after a couple of iterations, they incorporated <laughs> a, uh, a lactam. So it's a, a quinolinone, I'm waiting it up at the top now, um, mm. and preserving, as Mike pointed out, this uh, chloropyrimidine group. They actually um, made the macrocycle, which pre-organizes it in uh, bioactive conformation. Mm. And in addition, I don't know, Mike, if you want to mention the kinase I'll inhibition. Back up. <laughs> oh, yeah. From the... Yeah, we did notice uh, that they mentioned that these earlier molecules uh, were pretty good kinase inhibitors uh, due to having this NH pyrimidine here. And so when they went and fully substituted that nitrogen, like we have here with the morphine or later with the piperazine, they uh, got rid of that kinase activity. So that was a nice decision design feature that you can see here mm. that they've kept in the macro cycle. They have the piperazine here. So one thing I'd right. like to see, uh, could we see some of the other ligands from earlier overlaid on top of this one? Yeah. Wow. Nice. That's really cool. I really like, I was, I noticed that as you mentioned before, the space up there that was really going to be able to take taken advantage of, but that's really stark to be able to see how much uh, they're really able to fit in there. And the hydrogen right. bonds are able to take advantage up there too. And I believe they were trying to improve uh, the membrane permeability of some of these compounds too, which could have been the reason they got rid of that carboxylate. Mm. I see. And it was definitely the reason why they went after this, um, the chloropyrimidine versus uh, the triazine mm. and also an initial series, which was a uh, pyrozolopyrimidine that they had initially started with. And so it looks like, you know, with the piperzine, it also gives them a handle where they can build off here. And as we look at in the paper, they also realized they could build out here off mm. the uh, quinolinone nitrogen to reach out towards solvent as well. So they have a couple of different options of uh, how to build off this uh, when they want to make it into a protac. Mm. Oh, wow. And this was the protac compound that they, uh, they decided to synthesize. Um, and they incorporated a, I'm going to move over a little, I'll bring it closer to me, I guess, a thalidomide moiety, which is well known to uh, bind to cerebline and uh, form the ternary complex with Cul4 and E3 ligase. So this, uh, they decided to take a, a dual approach and make a heterobifunctional molecule for um, protein degradation. I guess. And so when we look at protax like this, you know, with the, the linker and then the, the cereblon binding, cerebron binding, uh, E3 ligase binder, we really have to add quite a bit of polar surface area as well. And it gets mm -hmm. into one of the issues a lot of times you find with Protax is it can really diminish your ability to get through cell membranes. And I think they show that mm -hmm. their uh, KCO2 permeability was quite a bit lower with this Protax than it was with, say, the morpholine compound. Really, the conclusion was that they showed that, um, in fact, they do get a degradation of BCL6, and they also get uh, inhibition in, I think, all three compartments, both the nucleus, um, cytoplasm, and uh, the soluble nuclear layer. And But the, the, what they found was that um, there's still residual BCL6 present so they didn't end up getting significant anti-proliferative activity in this uh, diffuse lymphoma BCL, BCL 
cell line. Um, mm. So, yeah, I think one of the conclusions was that maybe they need a combination therapy, perhaps with inhibitors as well as degraders. Yeah. I mean, overall, I, I have to admit, whenever, you know, you target like such a central protein, it just, you know, there, there's a lot of things that make a lot of sense, but I'm always impressed by the number of ways that, you know, it can be adjusted. These pathways can be rerouted to compensate for even something as, as central as BCL6. And just kind of goes to show you, um, you know, <laughs> there there are a few magic bullets in cancer, but you know, there aren't, uh, they don't come by very often. And um, exactly, yeah, a really beautiful piece of medicinal chemistry, though, to start with a a fragment like that and and uh, mm. you know build it out, improve it, make a macro cycle, and then uh, make it into a protac oh, as yeah. well. Well, it's a nice structure-based well, drug design story, that's for sure. It really is. Well, even with the macro cycle, I just, I really enjoyed seeing how closely, you know, that it just kind of fits and like kind of goes into sort of the screw. It's not like, you know, like a full pocket here, but it just does seem to really, as you mentioned, does like kind of keep it conformed properly. But even, even beyond that, it does seem to be able to really even take advantage of a little bit more contacts as well, which... You know, I, I don't yeah, think it's, fairly... you know, the, the biggest thing, but it's always nice. <laughs> it's kind of a shallow groove on the surface, too. You're, you're kind of right about, so, you know, the macrocycle probably helps, considering how potent it is, you know, at least the, oh, yeah. the core structure. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. And, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed this discussion on BCL6 inhibitors, and we're excited to see uh, what comes out from the AstraZeneca group in the future. Bye. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Carla. Bye, everyone. Bye.